Hello, and welcome back to We'll Run For. This is your host, Tom, and with me as always are Aaron. Hello. Michael. You're a wizard, Ari. <laughs> it's so bad. It's such a terrible accent. It's and, not good. And Diana. Hey, hey. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I have been listening to him say this. Ari Potter. He's going to ruin my something good right now because we have like been revisiting Hogwarts and the wizarding world. You, you sound like a pirate trying to say <laughs> Harry so Potter. Bad. You don't Oy, sound like pip, Hagrid. Pip, crikey, Harry. <laughs> it's like this weird cross between Australian and I don't even. It's just so bad. Hagrid Dundee. And every, every, that's what I said. That's exactly Hagrid what, Dundee. That's what it sounds like. Oh. pending. <laughs> it's so bad. Uh, it's worse than my, my Babu Freak, like, hey, hey. <laughs> you should totally do audiobooks. <laughs> How mad would you be if you heard an audiobook, Aaron? Oh and once they God. get to Hagrid. It was DMD. Harry <laughs> <Hey>, Potter. <laughs> I've been listening to this all week. My Dumbledore was long. pretty amazing. Oh my god, his Dumbledore is awful. <laughs> Off the rails, guys. Off the rails. Uh, hey, we're starting strong. <laughs> we always do. How are you guys? <laughs> we're good. We're good. Uh, I feel like it's been a little. I mean, we text and we Insta, but like I feel like we haven't spoken a lot because we recorded a few episodes. Oh yeah, all at once. Yeah. yeah. We had a marathon recording day. It is funny. I feel like it's been a while. Like when I was thinking about today, I feel like it's been longer this time when it was only been like two and a half weeks versus last time it was like four and a half. And I feel yeah. like this was the longer time. Yeah. I think it's because life is back to normal. Oh, well, although yeah. we did. Um, I feel like we've been busy as well because we actually like went out and did stuff on Saturday. So yeah. we went and we um, we did axe throwing. On oh. Saturday, we went to Stumpy's in Columbia. Cool. Yeah. I screamed every time I threw one. Oh, really? It startled me. Are you good at axe throwing, Diana? No. 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 <laughs> what about like nothing about me says that girl's going to be really good at axe throwing. That's Did why I asked. I was a stereotype. <laughs> like I was a legit a stereotype, stereotype the entire time. <laughs> Did you do one handed throwing or two handed? I tried both. Um, both were not effective. I think I got two in the wood, maybe. I think. I think you did okay. How'd you I do, it Tom? Was harder. I mean, I did. I did all right. Like, I definitely didn't land more than I landed. Uh. Mm. And it's weird because, like, you gotta when you throw it. Not only does it have to hit like blade first but it has to be like on a point like the point of the blade mm -hmm. oh the top yeah or the bottom yeah because i was like these should be going in easier so when i like went to go grab my axe off the floor obviously that's where it was <laughs> i was like well how hard is it to like hit it into the wood and i just tried to hit it into the wood and i couldn't get it to go in <laughs> oh wow <laughs> <He> said, <laughs> yeah i mean they're plenty sharp it was actually a lot of fun like i would definitely go back it's a it was a good setup um they kept our group in our own little stall, like yeah, we had to wear masks. You had to wear masks. They, I feel like, did they take our temperature? Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah, they so, took our temperature, and um, they serve beer, which surprised the heck out of us. It's a great idea, right? Oh yeah, no, a lot of them serve beer, and yeah. it always confuses me why they think that alcohol and throwing axes. throwing axes is a good idea. Actually, I remember Brittany telling me about how she was doing like a work party or something. And that was like the whole thing. It was like an all you could drink package while throwing axes. Like, yeah, this sounds. They did have the greatest invention known to man there. So they had a claw machine that had white claws in it, and it was oh only God. a dollar. <laughs> That's kind of amazing. It was amazing. We were yeah. so excited. <laughs> That's funny. I don't know. What have uh, we done? Uh, we. Went running and hiking. Yeah, we I actually did a group run this past Sunday, which we have. Uh, this is the second time more recently that we've joined the Pine Lunch Riders again back out 
They've been doing more group trail runs in the morning. The thing about it, the key is that they've been doing later group runs. So they've been doing like 8, 30, 9 o'clock group runs. Yeah, so we've been going. And I... I, while I could probably force myself to get up in the morning, Michael is not a early morning runner. Well, no, runner. I'm up early morning. Yes, I like to. A, I yeah, said you're not an yeah. early morning runner. Yeah, yeah. So I like to a eat. Difference. I like to eat yes. prior to it. Yeah. So yes, yeah, so we've been able to go to a couple group runs. So that's been that's fun. Good. Um, we almost, yeah, it's better than better than us because our group meets at seven, ugh. and it was a sheet of ice on Saturday, oh. so we ended up walking. Oh yeah, I saw that. It. We were confused actually when we saw your temperatures because we were like, "Really? It's that cold down there?" It was freezing, and wow. the um, it had rained the night before. Yeah, yeah. And I guess because like they're paved trails back along like well, you were there at Lake Centennial. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, and it was just like anywhere you stepped was just ice. Like you were just slipping and sliding. So then we were like walking on the grass, and then we try and run on the grass, and you'd run out of space. Like it was just a nightmare. Yeah. So, <laughs> My butt hurts so bad because you know, like if you're on kind of slippery. Oh ground, yeah. How you just tense up. Yeah. Yep. So that was like for like the last two miles. <laughs> Just clenched and the Thomas, entire time. It was he's terrible. such a nervous runner anyway about <laughs> like safety. Like he's always screaming like, watch the curb and get away from that and look at your feet. And he's like screaming that the entire time. So he was like in a state. It yeah. was like just not ideal running. running I actually think about Tom. him from time to time now because of that. Like with the we did oh that's oh right. My we God. did the icy the hike. Icy hike. Um, our plan, so we have that, um, race in March that we had signed up for that has 2000 feet of elevation. So we decided we have to start getting some elevation in. So we went back up to Tammany, one of our favorite places to just do a uh, quick elevation in a three and a half mile loop. You get 1400 feet. Oh, so wow. we were planning to do two loops, um, that day and we went and started going up and we're like, Oh, it's not that bad. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I guess you got to a certain elevation and it was just all snow and ice. Oh, God. And you couldn't. You had to step on the peaks of the rocks in between all the ice. But then we had to come down. The down part was the, the part that <laughs> like was awful. And it was like 45 mm-hmm. degrees sheet of ice yeah. for a mile. I mean, I was thinking about Tom the whole time, like, oh, my God, I can't even imagine what Tom would do about this. It was so bad. Oh, my God, it was so bad. Johnny Safety would sit down on his butt and try and, like, slide down. But you couldn't even do that There was a girl that we saw who actually got on her butt and tried to, like, go down for a little bit on her butt. That would be me. I would crab crawl. (laughs) Yeah, but it's also jagged rocks. Yeah. So it's sheets of ice and jagged rocks. Yeah, the... uh, I would back out before we left. <laughs> no, yeah. See, what I would do is I would get to that point where it was like, oh, there are icy rocks there. I guess we shouldn't go that way and just turn around. There is no other choice. Done. I don't though. think that we, yeah. well, first, I will say that we, it wasn't we bad went at up, the bottom. We went so. up and we were like, oh, it's not that bad. And then when it started getting a little worse, it got better. So we thought it'll be fine. It's just this one section, and then it turned out when we came around, it was not just that one section. Yeah, the problem is the way down is the shady side of the mountain. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. So it never yeah. melted. So, so it was pretty bad. But Yeah. And then we saw people go swimming in the waterfall. Oh, gosh. It was like 30-degree water, 35-degree water, whatever. There was this group of girls. I said it must be like a sorority like event or something. Or a team, or a team, or team or event something. or something. But they were. it was like 35 degrees out, and they were all in sports bras and shorts hiking, doing this hike that we're talking about with the ice and everything, just in shorts and sports bras. And then where the waterfalls were, where it's freezing because it's spring water on top of that, they all jumped into the waterfall. <laughs> we were like, what is happening? They were beet red. It was hilarious, actually. <laughs> anyway, that's about it. We're, yeah, we're kind of boring. Normal runs around here. Yeah. Blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah. We, picked, yeah. we stopped at some breweries along the way and picked up beer, which we're oh, drinking awesome. one right now from Somerset, New Jersey. Which you're housing in your new beer fridge. We are. Yes, our fancy right. beer fridge. I about that. Should Very have ran jealous. For that. Yeah. I'm, I'm shopping around for one. Are you? Yeah, I think I think you just need to well, bite look. the bullet and get one. That's what I was going to run for. But now um, I guess I'll come up with something different. Ooh. Because <laughs> I hadn't come up with anything and I was just thinking about the beer. So now I'll figure something out between now and then. Now and then, yeah. It's only it's only a couple minutes. I don't know. I feel like I've been like super productive. I've actually been getting up and working out and um, 
I've been doing 21 day fix, not the diet, obviously. Mm -hmm. Have you seen me? I can't. (laughs) But like, I have been um, doing all the workouts. I do love that workout. That's a good one. So it's pretty good. Um, Like they're a half hour long. So Mm -hmm. I thought that would be a good jump back in and then I'll try something else. I was doing Shanti for a while and I really like that. So I think maybe when I finish my 21 days, maybe I'll do some Shanti. T25. T25 or T20 because then it's 20 minutes. Oh, yeah. I do really like that Beachbody has a lot of those like shorter workouts where you can find ones that are like 25 to uh, a half hour and they're still super effective. Yeah, I think that's like I think that's good for me because what I'll do is I'll go and I'll run and then I'll come back and I'll do that. Yeah. And then it's kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or do like the elliptical or something and come back and do that. So. I've been working out almost every day. So how's uh, drinking into it. water going? Oh, um, it's going well. Um, it's hard because I have to pee all the time. Mm-hmm. And then <laughs> sometimes like I panic because I'm like, oh, I haven't drank enough. So then I'll drink a lot. <laughs> and then my pee's like clear. And I'm like, well, it's not supposed to be clear. It's still supposed to be like yellow. So then I have to like hold back. And like, I just haven't gotten it right. Uh, like I need to pace myself better. Yeah, but I think, I mean, I think you're doing really good. But I, yeah, I'm drinking it. But then like, I'll get to, I don't know, noon. And I'm like, oh no, I haven't drank enough water. And then I'll chug like yes. up yeah. to the noon point, And then it just pee it all out it's like not even hydrating me it's a waste <laughs> well so at least tmi with diana <laughs> someone's getting some goals in i actually felt really lame i have to i have to put this out there after after listening back to our episode listening to all of your goals and then listening to all of the, the listeners goals. I'm like, wow, I am so uninspiring right now. I'm like, I have no goals whatsoever. I think that is inspiring though. Cause I feel like it's real. It's okay to not have like big, huge goals. I think that's fine. Oh gosh. Live your life. Get through a pandemic. That's a goal. There you go. <laughs> that's true. I mean, it's, I, yeah, and we'll get to this later, but it's so much easier when everything is open for registration. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. you can just pick and choose what your next goal point is, you know? Yeah. That's no, I true. Agree. Do we have any five star reviews? Oh, Michael? look at that transition. Oh, yeah. Get in it. We have a re review from M. Harold. More miles, more smiles. Thanks for the laughs during your New Year's goals episode. Got me through a longest run this weekend. Loved hearing the variety and motivate me to set some. Can't wait to see you all crush them and for Tom to run an ultra. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, so, Melissa. Thank you. Thanks, Melissa. <laughs> she didn't even she didn't even add something crazy for Tom to do. No, look at that. No. Look at that. We could text she her might. and ask her whether she's got something uh, crazy it is for a, you to it do. Is a, it is a re-review mm. and... It is a not a net new review, but I still really appreciate it. And I will give you five <laughs> miles for that lovely review. Oh, yeah. And anybody She's... else out there who would love to leave a review with five stars and comment, I'll run five miles for you. And you can suggest some sort of ridiculous task for me to complete while I'm running. So what are we running for this week? Who wants to kick us off? Um, I can. Well, I'm running for new shoes because uh, when we went to go running on <laughs> on oh our gosh. trail run on Sunday, I went to slip on my speed goats and uh, they completely separated in half <laughs> <laughs> because apparently I have like 900 miles on them oh and didn't God. even think about it. I have been telling oh. him for a little while that he needs new shoes. Like 900 hard like- trail miles like. You know, like in the water, in you're supposed rock. to put like 300 to 400 like miles three on them. You ago, needed three pairs of shoes in that time. <laughs> three weeks ago, we started good. talking still about it, though. and because his treads were bad, like you could tell, we were on one of these runs. I was starting to slip a little where he, bit. He was yeah. slipping, and we were on um, a um, rocky thing. What was it? Uh, like a the, scramble, a rock yeah, scramble, yeah. and he kept slipping. And I said, "Well, you've been wearing these shoes for since like you got them for Umstead." <laughs> in april so you Time got them a stopped. month from that then and then we've we ran 1800 miles during the year so even if you figure half of those were trail miles which more of it was than that you're still at like 900 miles on these shoes 
Yeah, like, well, and do you just have one? I mean, I guess maybe you have a pair of trail and a pair of road, but you do yeah, you yeah. just have one pair of shoes and you wear it till they die and then buy a new pair of shoes? Uh, trail ones. Yeah, these are my trail ones. So, yeah. And then road, I, I tend to have two pairs of road, but actually both my road shoes were super old, too. He's not like me where I have four or five pairs of trail shoes and I have like four or five pairs of road shoes. Yeah, that's yeah. me. Like, I have... Three pairs of shoes I'm currently rotating. And then I was like, oh, when I get paid, I'm going to buy one more just so I have it in rotation. Yeah. Yep. That's, yeah. I, uh, not I, me. <laughs> yeah. I have three. I definitely have four pairs of trail shoes that rotate. And I'm pretty sure I have three or four pairs of road shoes. Mm. I am going to get a second pair of trail shoes for more of the hiking style trail. Work. Just order two of the same pair of shoes just to have them. Well, they're like, different for different things. I want something a little knobbier for some of the stuff. And the ones I have now are um, more for like regular trails like we run on. So, yeah, but it's still just one pair. Yeah, that's I think right. That's that's my thing. That it's just one pair. I mean, you should see that we should have seen what happened to these shoes <laughs> on both sides. <laughs> they like separated from the, from the soul. The so like Completely. on both sides, yeah. Like just the front of the shoe is hanging on to the side of the sole, <laughs> and then the whole sole, God. the rest of the shoe just like ripped, and he, you could see his socks across the sides <laughs> of both both of his. <laughs> so I recommend the Hoka Speed Goat fours because they lasted a long time, <laughs> and they were still the soles were still super cushiony. They're really oh comfortable gosh. still. It's just that they, yeah, I wore them hard. Anyway. Diana, what are you running for this oh, week? Oh, I am running for this amazing beer from Black Flag, Neapolitan Porter. It's chocolate, strawberry, vanilla porter. It smells like mm. the ice cream. It's like one of the best beers I've ever oh, had. Gosh. So I had to give Black Flag a shout out because they always do an awesome job. But this beer is freaking delicious, and I'm going to take all the calories that I can with it. That sounds amazing. And Tom calls it something stupid. Chalk Van Straw. I hate it. <laughs> That's what he oh, calls Neapolitan ice cream. What? Chalk Van Straw. Wait. Ch oh, because it's Chalk, chalk Van, Van Straw. straw. Okay, it's I awful. Guess. I hate it. Like, <laughs> do you something that your significant other, your loved one, your partner in life just says, and then it just like, you Don't feel it in it. your you feel it in your bones, and you're like, I can't if have you, you say that if anymore. If you make him say Harry it. Potter one more time, I will mur so murder all of you. Well, Who was it? Harry <laughs> Van Straw. But like, we'll be in the grocery store, and we're like, oh, we should get some ice cream. And Tom's like, pick up the Chalk Van Straw. And I'm like, I'm going to murder you. I was like, we can get any other ice cream. Like, oh, <laughs> But the beer is delicious. Cheers to Black Flag. You guys did awesome. Awesome with the spirit. Awesome. Oh, gosh. Mm, what am I running for this week? This week, I think I'm running for my Instapot. Ooh. Uh, can, you, can you come down here and spend a weekend and we just make a bunch of Instapot stuff? Because I'm very intimidated by mine. Are you? Oh, I just made chili. Um, I We did the slow cook uh, on the slow cook setting, not the, uh, yeah, the pressure, pressure cooker. Yeah. Although I do really like the pressure cooker. It works amazingly. Yeah, we made tacos last night with it. Yeah. Well, it was so funny because I was listening to Run, Eat, Drink, and they were making chili in Instapot today talking about it. And I'm like, wait, there's literally chili in our Instapot <laughs> cooking right now as I'm listening to this. So, so, <laughs> yeah. Like, this is like meta. Yeah, mine is very was a very basic because then they asked me what we put in it. Mine was a very basic chili with just the normal, you know. I didn't do like white bean or any or no, chicken was, or like it was just basic, very yeah. basic. Except we used ground turkey instead of ground beef. I was like, does it at least have meat in it, you animals? <laughs> <laughs> we yes. could have done. A, I did ground turkey beyond the beyond crumbles. No, yeah, no, I wouldn't have wanted that. I wanted anyway. I, I would actually do vegetable chili. Um, but yes, this is a very classic chili. We just did turkey meat instead of uh, ground beef. But yeah, so we've used the Instapot um, for the last few weeks. We've Made been using it a lot. Soups, we've been yeah. making a lot of soup. It's like that oh, wintry nice. cold. And it's good because then when you come in from, because we run in the evenings a lot, um, when we come in, then dinner's just ready. Yeah. So I really like that. Yeah, it's yeah, ready to nice. go. Nobody has to cook anything. Just scoop it out, eat some. Yep. Yeah. So I'm yeah. running for my Instapot. 
I'm Tom gonna... had to have the Instapot. He mm. had to have it. We were going to use it all the time. And I said, no, we didn't have space for it. It's going to sit in a box <laughs> and it's going to get used twice a year. <laughs> and that's what's happened. <laughs> you know what? It's funny, too. The same thing with the air fryer. I got the air fryer for my birthday like three years ago and I yep. literally never used it. And then all of a sudden, like maybe six months ago, we pulled it out and we use it like all all the time now so now we have these two yeah. giant appliances on our tiny little countertop but we've been using them pretty regularly but we use them no, pretty regularly yeah, yeah. yeah so i wouldn't mind if they were out like and we use them a yeah. lot we just don't yeah. use them oh yeah the pro problem is because you have the same issue where you have small amount of counter space mm -hmm. so like put it keeping a, like a large appliance like that out kind of like i don't know takes up a lot of your counter space <laughs> yeah and our instapot's cute we have an r2d2 one. Oh. oh that is adorable Hmm, I'm kind of jealous now. Yeah, whenever it beeps, I say, that's right, R2. We're going to the Dagobah system. <laughs> <laughs> and even if no one's in the kitchen with me, I, I chuckle. <laughs> I was going to do right. a Yoda accent. Oh, God, please, please, <laughs> please. I want to hear move it on. so no, bad now. No, 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 let's, let's move on. Tom, what are you running for? What are you I running for? I am running for my new routine. Oh, I thought you said, we're going to say, I'm running to hear Michael do a Yoda impersonation. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear it. He wants to do it. I can see it in his eyes. He wants to do it so bad. I don't even know what he said. Oh, now i got to bleep myself. <laughs> Jesus. What does he say? There do is or no do not. There is no try. Do or do not. There is no try. <laughs> What? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what? Tom, um, what are you running for? Please. I'm save running us. for my new routine, which includes Yoda swimming, voices? swimming and running. Yes, I'm so all the proud swimming. Of you, boo. Yes, that's awesome. So Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, I'm gonna be running. Um, that's with our training group. Um, and then Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday I'll be swimming. Hmm. And then Friday will be rest day. That's awesome. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. How are you feeling with the swim? I need to do a lot more of it. <laughs> Let me tell you. Um, I don't know. I get gassed so quickly swimming. Yeah. Um, I, I know how to swim. I feel like my form is okay. Like, you know, I know I'm not going to drown, but am I ready to swim a mile right now? Yeah. In a, in a lake? No. Yeah, not, breathe. Not just yet. When I learned how to swim, I think breathing was surprisingly the hardest thing. Like I, as an as a quote unquote endurance athlete, I kind of expected the breathing part of it to be the part that I got, and it was the hardest part of it. <laughs> yeah, breath control and and like properly breathing to the side when you're doing freestyle, mm -hmm. and not just you know exhale like blowing it all out right away, mm -hmm. and not over like breathing too much. Yeah. Like it just it it's kind of muscle memory cuz I grew up swimming, so I I sort of know what I'm doing, but I got to put in some work. Yeah. I mean my 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 swimming event isn't until like mid to late June, but I'm going to need all, all this time to kind of build up my endurance. But it's gone pretty good so far. Yeah. That's awesome. Love seeing you out there doing it. That's and it looks like the of, pool's been pretty empty. Yeah, I go early. Okay. Um, and there's two pools. There's a regular lap pool, and there's then there's a warm warm pool. Um, and I go at like five a.m. Um, and that's that's actually one of my goals that I have is to maintain this routine and see how long I can keep this up without skipping days. So you'll be a goal getter. I yeah. will be a goal getter. A goal getter. That's such a <laughs> clever name. <Wow>. Mar -mar. <laughs> So is it, this is the start of our new segment, the Goal Getters. Uh, you set a goal, you hit it, you let us know. It doesn't matter what it is. If it's swing, swimming a couple times a week and you hit it, let us know. If it's whatever It's having your pee thing. not be Yeah, if you want to pee yellow. or yellow. It's got to be I in between. I can't get my pee right. It's got to be in between. <laughs> That's Diana's goal getter next for if next you, time. If you hit the right hue, uh, <laughs> the right hue of P, just let us know. I also know. I also need to like make a goal to not eat fast food for like mm. a week. Mm. 
And that'll be a good goal. Well, so, I mean, our goal has been, that's why we've been using the Instapot, is to to actually not eat out, like, more than once a week. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. that's been our goal, which we haven't met yet, so I can't be a goal getter. But next week, I'll let you know whether that has happened or not, because that is my goal. (laughs) We'll try, but it's not going to happen. So here's our goal getters. Uh, Let's see. Laura set a goal of a 2.30 half marathon, and she hit it with a 2.28.27. Oh, my God. She's our first official goal getter. Yeah. I told her that on on Instagram. Jamie, my uh, former co-host, who I fired, we remember (laughs) uh, back to his... uh, Inside the runner studio. studio. Um, Jamie has had a goal of hitting a sub 35K after his massive weight loss, and he killed it this week. And did a 28 25 5K. Get at it. That is that's amazing. So, yeah, that's yeah. so awesome. So he was cooking. And then Greg, uh, who, sm- who set a sub four hour marathon goal and smartly did not try and run it at Big Sur, um, <laughs> he crushed that at a 351 38. Wow. Speedy. Nine minutes faster yeah. than the his goal. goal. That's yes. incredible. That's really impressive. They are killing yes. it. And all those people did did running big running goals. But if you want to be a goal getter, doesn't you have can, to be that. You can yeah. be you can do anything. It could be, hey, I set a goal to run ten times the next two weeks and I did it. Like mm. I, that's it. We just you just want to hit your goals. That's it. Yeah. I can do a little shameless plug as well if anyone needs a goal. Charm City Run is doing a virtual challenge mm. called the Live Give Run Virtual Challenge. And you pay for what distance you're going to run. So it's not expensive. So if you're going to run a 5K, it's $5. If you're going to run a 10K, it's $10. Oh. A half, it's 13.1. I guess $13.10. <laughs> and, um, and then uh, 26.2. So whatever um, distance you get, that's what you pay. And 100% of the money actually goes to charity. Um, where's it going, Tom? The food bank? It goes to Meals on Wheels. Meals on Wheels. So that's 100% awesome. of that. Yeah, that's that. awesome. So uh, you can sign up on Charm City Run's website. So I will go do that. Fun fact. Goal. Fun fact. I signed up for all of the distances. No. Oh. Because they give you a window to do them in. It's basically 10 days. So that's essentially dopey in 10 days. Okay. So I can run 50 miles in 10 days. Not bad. So Go get it, Tom. Awesome. And if yeah, you... I mean, it, it's a good cause. We like to support Charm City Run in general and whatever they do. Um, but yeah. yeah. Good goal. If you, if, yeah, if you, need, if you need a goal, come get it. some money. Yeah. yeah. So if you want to uh, submit your goal getter achievements, you can do that on Facebook or Instagram when we post it. Or just email willworm4podcast at gmail.com. That's our email address. That is our email address. Yes. All right. I don't know how to check our email. <laughs> oh, I, it comes to my phone. I see it. So. It comes to my phone as well. <laughs> yeah. We're, we got it covered, guys. We got it. We're we got good. it. We're good. We're good. Again, I've not done the reading. <laughs> <laughs> and then before we get into our main topic uh, today, um, just wanted to tease a little something that we have coming up. We're going to be putting together a virtual challenge. Everyone loves a virtual challenge. Oh, more details to come, but um, that's all I'm going to give you. It's wow. going to be a virtual challenge. That's all it's you going to get. Be a virtual distance challenge. Ooh. Um, maybe a single event, maybe multiple events. Um, we'll run for themed, and it's going to be really fun. And, and you're going to get are, something for it? You will get something you will for get it. will get something for doing it. Yes, Ooh. yes, there will be swag. Oh, so and yeah. they're being very vague because they have no idea <laughs> what they're planning yet. We this have not worked out the details. <laughs> we have much in the spirit of this show. We have lots of we have the the wheels have been been turning. We have ideas. Yes, don't you worry. <laughs> Diana's blowing up our spot over here. She really is. That's okay. She's keeping us honest. <laughs> so what are we talking about, Tom? We are talking about tips for new runners or tips for people that are just 
either getting into running for the first time or getting back into it. Um, this will probably be one of the only times we give any kind of advice um, <laughs> that 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 we feel semi credible giving. Just the um, tips, though. So. Yeah, just these <laughs> tips. Uh, but the best part about this is that because we aren't great at this, we went to all of you listeners. We outsourced it. We yeah. outsourced. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. And this is a this is. A, idea came from michael didn't it michael yes. yeah yeah like randomly uh, in the yeah. middle of last week's episode yeah, he was like yeah. this is what we're doing <laughs> i thought it would be good so because here we are we're, we're at the point in january where pretty much everybody's given up on their like i've never been a resolution person so it never really affected me but i know this is the point of the year where everybody gives up well yeah they say like within the first 15 days yeah um is like the most likely time that people um, think about giving up their resolutions. That's how quick people give up their yeah. resolutions. And I started running. My running started in early December one year. Mm. So, like, I understand that it's hard in the winter to keep that going. Mm. So mentally, so that's yeah. I think that's where I kind of thought about it. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But I've never been a resolution person. So, but I know that the statistics are not great for carrying them through. Yeah. <laughs> well so we we got a ton of feedback from you guys so we're going to kind of parse through that kind of give some opinions uh on it uh instead of doing you know us and then you we figured we'd kind of start with you guys up front and then um kind of talk about what you guys gave us the feedback you gave us yeah and um we got so much feedback we actually tried to chunk it into kind of three big categories to make it a little mm. easier so it's kind of like your the big three tips for starting running yes yes so Here's we'll start with um when you're starting out how how do you how do you go about starting slow <laughs> and so Jamie and Greg both said that uh, they use the couch to five k apps. Uh, so they're perfect to get started running and they, they're good progression. So they start, you know, where you're walk running and you progress through the, the, the plan, uh, where eventually you can run a 5k. Mm -hmm. Um, and one of the things Greg mentioned is not to be afraid to repeat weeks as needed. And I thought that was really good advice. Yeah. Don't feel like you have to progress constantly. I think that's the big thing. Yeah. I know that that will kind of get me where I've decided like before I progress a lot of times I'll make sure I feel good before I progress so like if I'm supposed to run eight miles and I go out and do eight miles and feel like garbage or like it didn't go the way I want it to go or whatever it is I, I won't say okay well next week I did that garbage eight miles let me do 10 I'll yeah. say well let me try and do eight again and see if it feels better and then I'll progress. Yeah, that's really good advice. So, did anybody here do the couch to 5K? I did. Okay. Yeah, I did. Um, and I did it kind of on the treadmill. And it was so funny because I didn't know like what, how fast I was supposed to be going for any of it. So I was like guessing on the treadmill. And... I was, I, I mean, I think I was as heavy as I am now, but like in way worse shape. So I felt worse. So I remember like putting the treadmill at like a four, which is like a really fast walk and being like, this must be running. Like, this is what <laughs> running feels like. <laughs> yeah. And I think just everyone starts out at their own pace. So like, yeah. don't feel like you have to go as fast as. The yeah, person and I, next I, to you, or even like the person on the treadmill next to you. Yeah, no, yeah, definitely. I think that's um, a few people mentioned that. Uh, I know Angie says, you know, endurance comes first, speed comes second. Uh, whatever you think your pace should be, you're probably going too fast <laughs> and to <laughs> dial it back. Uh, and that walking is a normal part. Um, I know Megan from the Pineland Striders, who I just recently met, uh, said interval between running and walking initially. Um, so we got a lot of that that same kind of feedback in in this. So yeah. I think that that's a big thing is yeah. just don't be afraid to have to walk. Yeah, I d yeah. I didn't do couch to five k, but I literally started from zero, and I was like I was forty two at the time, mm. so I was not young. <laughs> I was, 
And, uh, but I, I have a track at work, so I just would go out for 25 minutes, like at lunch and do whatever I could. And like those first like couple months, it was like 16 minute miles. That's all yeah. I could do. Cause I'd literally done nothing for 20 years, mm-hmm. you know? So, well, I, when I started, I think I had quote unquote had experience running, but it was always the experience of what people are talking about, where I thought that I should, in order to be a runner, that meant I had to like run, but I didn't realize so I'd like run really fast and then I would get winded and I would hate it and I'd quit. So when I actually became successful at running was when I became a walker and I started going out for walks and then I was like, oh, I could probably run to that tree. And so I'd run to the tree and then I'd walk and then mm-hmm. I would be like, I could run to that the end of that street. And so then I would do that. So again, I didn't do the couch to 5K, but I was only successful once I pulled away from the mindset of what a run, what I thought a runner was supposed to be. Yeah. yeah. And I like what Angie said about endurance coming first. Cause I think, um, Oh, and I think karate last name chop also mentioned, um, <laughs> endurance coming, <laughs> endurance coming first. Um, cause I remember going up for my long runs and thinking they had to be the same pace as I was running, like on my weekday runs when I was running much shorter distances mm-hmm. and realizing, Oh, I should be going, like a couple of minutes slower than what my pace is when I do yeah. like my speed work on Wednesday night is. And the, you know, the long runs are for endurance and then you can kind of, you know, go faster on race day, but the, the longer runs are for endurance. Well, I yeah. know like Greg always says <laughs> run slow to get fast. And uh, I, that's a big thing that I, I also figured out along the way is that you shouldn't be going fast speeds all the time. Sorry, Tom, what, what were you about to say? Well, I was going to go back to the couch to 5K. I didn't do that, but I think as runners now, we are a bit spoiled because there's any number of those mm-hmm. apps. Mm-hmm. And when I was just getting into it, I did Jeff Galloway. I downloaded Jeff Galloway's app. And so I was training for my first half marathon and I was doing interval training using his app. And I just heard him in my ear on the treadmill for like six months being like, Start running, start walking. <laughs> Here we go. And it like, and then so much to the point where when we went to the expo, I met Jeff Galloway and I kind of fanboyed out. I was like, <laughs> you've, been, you've been in my ear for the last six months in this app. So, I mean, find what works for you. I know Catch to 5K is super popular and it works for people, but like there's a lot of options out there. Oh, for sure. For sure. Like me, I, I'm not a big structure person. Like, um, I never have done any kind of real training plan or anything. Um, but what I did in the beginning was my main goal was to not get hurt. Like, uh, cause you know, in the beginning how your shins feel like they're going to explode, like they're going to rupture because, <laughs> because you've never run before. So now your yeah. shins feel like the worst things in the world. Like I made sure I stretched them well and like I didn't, I just made sure I didn't push too hard. Like mm-hmm. as much as you want to push hard, don't because it's just going to make you set back anyway. You're better off just taking your time and learning to run slow takes forever. Cause I think I ran everything at the same pace all the time in the beginning. Yeah. For like the first two years I ran everything at the same pace. It was like, I just gotta go run, gotta go and just go super slow. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. that people get really caught up with pace. And I mean, even I did like and I still sometimes do. Uh, but uh, pace is really doesn't mean anything. Yeah, I think if you're looking to set a time goal or something like that. Yeah, yeah eventually that's I agree. Yeah. But, but if you're first general, starting yeah. out, your goals, you know, should be to to finish finish things. something yeah, yeah. like make and somebody um Somebody else mentioned, oh, Brez Kathy, set goals each time you head out. So head run down the block to the fire hydrant, then give your permission to stop if you need to build gradually. So, and I think that that's really important. So like, even if you're not doing a couch to 5K thing, just make, set small goals for yourself. Like today, yeah. my goal is going to be to run a half a mile more than I did yesterday or last week. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it doesn't even have to be a distance. Like I said, it could also be... I want to run this distance and have it feel better than I felt last time. Like it can be small like that. And then, um, yeah, I've just looked up karate's, um, comment 
and it was new runners focus too much on their times, mm. miles, splits, etc., and can get frustrated that they're not improving as quickly as they'd like to. The speed will come, but you need to be consistent and build endurance first. And that's 100% true. Because I was like, Michael, I ran everything at the exact same pace. And I was like, why am I not getting faster? <laughs> like, I wasn't doing speed work. I wasn't doing like hills. I wasn't doing anything to make myself faster. I was just running more. So I was like, I should be faster. And I didn't understand why I wasn't getting faster. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's and I and also Amy uh from Running Drink said increase the mileage slowly. And that's another thing. Yeah. Like, yeah, your pace, don't worry about your pace. And also kind of figure out what drives you. Like for some like for Jamie, like that 5K goal was important to him. Like for me, it was doing a different distance that meant something. Mm -hmm. So everybody's going to have a different thing that motivates them to go forward. So, and like some people are different. Like we were listening to, well, I was listening to, um, the running on tap and they were talking about how, um, ab about resolutions and what we were just talking about, how people kind of give up on them, um, and how to keep yourself on track. And both of them are very highly structured people. So they have like a Google doc where they, Put, put all their mileage in that they're planning to do and what workouts they're planning to do. And they like to check off boxes and, and that works mm. for some people. So like, that. like she can see exactly what she's doing and then she can cross it out on the calendar and mm. know that she's done it. And so if that works for you and that motivates you, then that's a great way to get started is like, okay, today I'm going to, or this, for this week, I'm going to write down everything that I want to do and then check off those boxes as you go. Um, when I first started running, that was big for me. I was definitely mm -hmm. a box checker. I am not anymore. And that doesn't work the same way for me the way it did before. But through my running journey, a lot has changed. So in the beginning, you just got to find what works for you. I can totally see that because um, I think I mentioned on the last episode, I'm doing this Sesame Street challenge. And the app wasn't up yet to track your mileage. So I literally started physically writing it on a calendar mm -hmm. like I walked this many miles and I ran this many and I did the elliptical for this many miles and like now that I'm seeing it on the calendar like I don't want an empty space on the calendar I like yep. I want to at least have something so it's kind of that like completionist in me where I was mm -hmm. like oh god I'm just like looking at this bare spot on the calendar let me like go at least do do something and I think someone else hang on where is it um Oh yeah, JD J G runs. Do you know who that is? Mm -mm. Not offhand. Oh. Well, <laughs> welcome, new friend. <laughs> if you don't feel like running, put on your running clothes and tell yourself just go for a walk around the block. The walk will turn into a run. And if that if it doesn't, then that's okay. A walk is still better than nothing. And yep. I just love that advice. Like, that's oh so awesome. God, yeah. this is gonna feel terrible, but just go do something. Yeah, I think in the beginning consistency there's such a balance between the physical and the mental in the beginning mm -hmm. um and throughout actually but like right in the beginning you will talk yourself out of it 10 times in a row um you know just showing up being consistent to show up and just go out and tr see what you can do right because you only get better with with repetition um so i think that's a really good point is just even if you don't feel like it prepare to do it and and see how that motivates you. Yeah, because I can I I did it yesterday because I had off work for Martin Luther King Day. I just dated us, but I had off work and Tom was still working. So I got all dressed and I got in my running stuff and I was like, oh, I'm going to go to the gym or I'm going to go to the fitness center. Or I'm going to work out. And then I sat on the couch for like an hour just like texting <laughs> and like scrolling through TikTok. And I was like, what am I doing? Like, yeah, I have to get up and yeah. go. Um, and even if I like walk up to the gym or a little fitness center and I decide, Oh, I don't feel like running, like I'll jump on a bike or I'll jump on a lift and do yeah. like something. something. Yeah. Um, well, that's why, I mean, everyone always used to make fun of me and they probably still will. Uh, but I used to like, if I was getting up to run in the morning, I would pretty much be ready. Like I would have my sports bra on and I would like have everything laid out and like be like pretty much all I'd have to do is pull pants on and put the shirt on and, and go out the door. But every like everything else was very prepared because I mentally knew that unless all mm -hmm. of that was done, I could talk myself out of it because it was going to take me more than like five, 10 minutes to get ready. And once that's 
there for me, it's easy to phone it in and be like, uh, I could get like another half hour of sleep instead. Yeah. Even just like laying out your clothes helps me. Like if yeah. I have to get up and like I'm looking for stuff all over the place, I'll be like, oh, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. I'll do it later. Um, and that's, that's kind of an easy transition into running gear. Mm. Since we were talking about getting ready, unless anybody else has anything they want to add about pace or uh, just was, not pace, but just accountability. Like in the end, you're only mm. going to be accountable to yourself. But what I did in the beginning is I basically was like posting about it uh, wherever it was at the time. Maybe it was Twitter, but with but with friends and stuff, so they would be like, "Oh, it's good to see you out there," or whatever you know, or whether it's somebody locally or online or a running yeah, group, join Strava or, or whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah, like just accountable to. Sometimes it's good to lean on other people, but in the end, you're going to have to be accountable to yourself. But in the beginning, it's okay to lean on other people yeah. to, you know, feel like sometimes they can give you that extra push. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what happened to me yesterday. I was te when I wasn't going to the gym, I was texting with my friend Julie. And I think at the very beginning of the conversation, I was like, oh, I'm about to go run. And then it was, I don't know. 50 minutes later and she's like have you not gone for your run yet and i was like oh no i guess i should probably go do that <laughs> <laughs> i think i've posted it on facebook a couple times too like i remember uh, a few years ago posting on facebook like it's nine o'clock and i said i was supposed to go run at eight o'clock and i got like 20 comments that were like go run and i was like oh god now all these people know that i'm supposed to run and now i have to go run <laughs> <laughs> so like just those little things that yeah. hold you accountable and and not to uh, um belabor this but i will say that sometimes runners get a bad rap on social media for posting incessantly yeah. and i think part of it is mentally if you're putting it out there yeah mm -hmm. it's gonna it's gonna motivate you to keep putting it out there yeah mm -hmm. i agree yeah not necessarily shame yourself into doing it but like like i'll post that i showed up to the pool at 6 a.m because i'm proud of myself for doing that yeah you should be you know um, or if you post, if you post a run, yeah, you did a 5k, you might've done mm -hmm. hundred five K's, but you still did a 5k post yep. about it. doesn't matter. Whatever motivates you. Yeah. 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 That's, that's the big thing. I agree. Exactly. That's right, it. So let's, you guys want to talk gear? Talk sure. gear. Our favorite topic. I feel like the biggest, most popular advice was getting good shoes. I kind of disagree with this advice actually. Mm -hmm. Oh, see I don't know, like not so not like feedback. totally. Go, but, go ahead, Michael. But yeah, not totally. Say. Just I'm just saying in the beginning, I think it's okay. Don't spend a lot on the shoes. Try a bunch of different ones and find what you like and what works for you. See what I was gonna say, like because I know Megan Gorney was talking about going to a running store and getting fit for shoes, and I like that idea. And they're more expensive, but. Typically, if you go to a running store, they let you test the shoes mm. so yeah. you can wear them for two or three months and then take them back. So I was going to say, like, when you're going out and you're looking for a new pair of shoes, like, go to a running store that lets you do that. So, like, Road yeah. Runners, you can do that. Charm City Run. I'm sure there are more. more yeah, I mean, locally local here. Ads. Yeah, I was going to say, locally here, you have Road Runner Sports uh, who does that. You have to have the VIP membership. But um, even Running Warehouse... They have that as well. They have a 90-day try and return. Um, you can't uh, get a refund, but you can exchange for a new pair of shoes. Yep. Um, and then locally here in New Jersey, we have the Haddonfield, running store of Haddonfield, Morristown. Like, like the whole fleet feet around um, the country. Yeah, fleet feet, like oh, yeah, fleet yeah. feet yeah. around the country. Um, a lot of those police places, like you said, Diana, have the return policy. Try and buy, buy and try and then you can exchange them if they don't work for you. Yeah, and yeah, then you can buy like the ones that are slightly used. So the mm -hmm. ones that, so, and I mean, that happened to me. I bought a pair of Hoka's. Um, I liked I liked my first pair of Hoka's and then I bought a second pair of Hoka's, wore them twice, decided I hated them and took them <laughs> immediately back yeah. to Roadrunners. Yeah. Like, so someone got a practically brand new pair of shoes that I think I wore for like, four mile run and then like a six mile <laughs> run yeah and like it's all it's all the miles they had on it so someone got basically a brand new yeah. pair of shoes that was probably like half off yeah that's pretty cool yeah. um yeah. i did actually go to road runners and they did the getting fit for your, the shoe where you run on the treadmill and they watch you mm -hmm. run and whether you pronate or over pronate or under pronate or whatever all those terms are um 
And in the end, I guess I didn't end up using any of the shoes <laughs> that they recommended. So I'm not, I'm kind of back and forth on, on, on whether or not, uh, I mean, yeah. shoes are definitely important, but I'm not sure that um, the getting fit thing worked out for me the way that it has for other people. Mm. Uh, yeah, I feel like it worked for me, but I feel like the longer I've run, my feet have changed. That's possible too, yeah. Like, so I feel like I've tried different types of shoes like i was really into the brooks glycerin mm -hmm. and then i switched to hoka's because i thought they'd help my knee and now um the glycerins i've been wearing wide shoes and it's hard to get them in wide so i was like well let me try a pair of ghosts and if i don't like them i take them back i know i love my ghosts yeah. So. Oh, yeah well i will agree that once you figure out like Maybe you don't want to spend a lot of money like right up front and you want to try it a couple of different pairs or brands. But once you get into running and you're going to run consistently, it is very important to have good shoes um, yeah. that work for you because they're what prevent injuries. And um, if you have good cushioning, uh, they're what keep your feet stable. They're they're like tires for your feet, basically. They're what keep you moving. <laughs> So shoes are, I do agree, very important. Now, something I did not know, um, actually, I forgot to put her name here, but Laura mentioned that um, the ones that are on sale um, from 150 to 40, they probably have been sitting on the shelves for over a year and the cushion gets harder as they sit there. Oh, um, that. that can still cause some injuries. Look inside the t shoe tongue and you can see the production date. Most shoes will reach stores when they're about six months old. Did you know that the production date's inside of your shoe? <laughs> no. Someone go get a pair of shoes. I know. Like, I know. I actually meant to go look look at this, and I forgot to before we recorded this. But I thought that was really interesting advice. I'm probably not the person to listen to about shoes after the story earlier. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> That's <laughs> probably true. No, because you're like, they were fine. They pr they, I doubt they were fine. They were, they were not like, fine. They were, they were not, not fine. fine. I promise you, I looked at them. They were not fine. Like, it's so funny. Like, our, our running coach works at the store, and I was in there just chit-chatting with her, and a guy came in, and I was kind of waiting for her to be done. Um, and he's like, well, these shoes aren't in bad shape. And she's like, the tread is almost gone. And he was like, I just kind of assumed they were like practically new because I'd only had them for a few months. Oh like, gosh. like people don't know like what to look for when they're yeah. looking at like, is my shoe dead? And so that's something that um, when you're starting out, you may not know. But yes, shoes do die uh, and you do need to replace them. They say on average about three to four hundred miles. So when you're first starting out, it'll probably take you a while to get to needing new shoes. But just so that you're aware, at some point you have to replace your shoes and not run 900 miles. Yeah, I think when trails. I first started running, I had the same pair of shoes for like two years. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I didn't know. I was like, I'm supposed to replace these? Mm hmm. <laughs> yeah, I think it depends on the mileage you're doing and stuff. And if you walk in them in between running and stuff like that, too, that that plays a factor. Um, yeah, some people are big proponents of like breaking in their shoes. And I am, but I do it with runs. Like I never wear my running shoes when I'm not running. Oh, I'm, same. I think early on I broke in shoes. But then at some point, I, I don't know, with the amount of miles we run now, I don't feel like I have to. Mm. Uh, yeah. cause I think my, I mean, I won't feet are just hardened to everything. <laughs> no, I mean, I won't run like a 10 mile or plus with a pair of new shoes. Like yeah. I'll run, I'll go out and run a three to five miler for a few runs yeah. in a new pair before I'll do a long run on them. Like That's, I won't jump yeah. into a pair of shoes and do a long run. I've yeah, run a I'm, 20 I'm mile or a new shoes. So. Well, yeah. I can't. Again, we don't listen to Michael about no. advice <laughs> on how to start running apparently. <laughs> but I was listening to, I listened to WDW radio, which is like an old school Disney podcast. I mean, it's been around since like, 2007 or something like that Lou Mangiello but his wife um, started kind of the running team that's the WDW running team and she's like I wear my running shoes like around the house to break them in she's like before I go for a run that's good. Um, in them at all and I had never heard of anybody doing that before but I guess some people like walk in them before they run in them I guess yeah, yeah like, just having them on and yeah. yeah get comfortable see if they're right so I'm surprised that the only person that called out socks is Angie. 
because I will I will tell you they are the shoes less sexy neighbor, but <laughs> they are so important. Getting decent running socks. True, true. Hmm. Because again, and this is for people that are just getting going. There's a lot of rubbing that you don't expect right when you start. Didn't and, you wear like work socks? Oh, that was terrible. I <laughs> oh god, yeah, yeah. I remember the story. Yeah, I was like stopping on the way home from work to do some treadmill, and I I had everything else I brought with me, but I had work socks, dress socks, and I'm like, socks are socks. What's gonna? What's the worst <laughs> that could happen? They tore my feet apart. All right, so good run socks. Good run socks. Yeah. Anti chafe. Yeah. No yeah. one mentioned that. Yeah. You're going to have to, Leave at some toes. point, you'll have to get to that and realize yeah. that. Yeah. But we've talked a lot about chafing on this podcast. So yeah. Yeah. if you've, well, I guess if you're new, you may have not listened previously. But um, yeah, you don't want to chafe. It's not comfortable. It's not great. No. Nope. No. But good running socks are good. I, um, I don't know. I need to find the perfect thickness of my mm, socks. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, I'm picky t- about like, run socks. I don't like thin ones. See, I, I like, like a, a little, little cush. Thin. Yeah, I like a little more thin than thick. I usually buy the features rather than the, what are they, the Balaga? Oh, I like the Balaga. The Balaga is a, that's, that's, yeah. that's the ones that I use. Yeah. And it I took me a while to be willing to spend uh, like seven plus dollars per pair of socks. I hate it. But I will say my feet are a lot happier. And no, I try I and like, buy them on sale. For Christmas. Yeah, I try and get them on sale or ask for them for Christmas or something like that. Yeah, but I will say that is true. It, they they do make it worth it. Mm-hmm. You get you have a lot of the Roadrunner ones, don't you? I have Balegas a lot, and then mm. what's the other brand? I'm drawing a blank, but yeah, Dry I would nuts. definitely invest in good socks. And actually, for anybody who's listening to this, if you want to know what we feel about gear I, a couple episodes ago we did a an episode dedicated to gear so oh, yeah. check check out yeah. that past episode i don't know which one it is but it was brilliant we'll yeah. put it in the show notes if i remember well and basically it was a hour-long advertisement for squirrels nut butter because aaron, <laughs> aaron thinks she works for that company so oh gosh yeah um yeah i mean other than that i don't think there's really too much starting out i mean obviously as you go you know you get lights and flip belts and pouches oh, and all that shirts. kind of stuff but don't um, wear like t- i wore a cotton shirt to run tonight oh yeah because it was cold nope. out so it really doesn't affect anything but when it's a little bit warmer make and you're sure gonna you, sweat yeah, yeah make sure you have some kind of dry fit type of shirt yeah, everyone does that. I wouldn't say new runners just do that. It's a rite of pack- passage yeah. to screw up and wear <laughs> cotton. all cotton on a run, and yeah. then just realize you've made a mistake. <laughs> I only do it in the winter time. Like I, it's like whatever it was tonight, forty degrees, and I wore a short sleeve shirt, so I knew I wasn't going to sweat. So I wore a cotton shirt, but otherwise, don't wear a cotton shirt. It's more because he's lazy and didn't feel like changing there was out that of his work too. shirt. Yeah. Well, no, it's also a little warmer, and it was just warm enough. But, but yeah, temperature. Uh, all right. Uh, anybody else got anything about starting out gear before we move into crush training? I will say, like, invest in the shoes, but, like, don't spend a lot of money on, like, workout clothes to start out with. Like, you don't have to buy, mm-hmm. like... Lululemon or whatever it is yeah, to, or like to Nike get started. Pro or, like yeah. or Nike like go old navy. Like my old navy running pants are still like my favorite yeah. running pants. And yeah. they're when you get them on sale, they can be like eight dollars. I'm wearing a pair of old navy running pants right now, actually. Yeah. Like <laughs> don't feel like buy those first uh, and then like try. I went to TJ Maxx and Marshall's a lot of times too and like got some on brand ones like like uh, Adidas or Nike or whatever um ones and they were pretty good. Oh, running underwear. Yes. Or, yeah. I call the them well Diana calls them my running panties. I refer to all Tom's underwear as panties and he gets <laughs> real mad. <laughs> I feel like we've had this conversation before. <laughs> they were a game changer, I'm telling you. Yeah. Running panties. <laughs> Get decent <laughs> running underwear. Yes. Don't try running in boxers. Let me just tell you that ahead of time. Cotton boxers, that is. Oh, is that how you chafed your peen? Yes. That was not a good time. <laughs> All right. Not a good time. 
Don't do that. <laughs> All right. Okay. Run commando. So. <laughs> All that's right. that cross so that's, training. That's gear. <laughs> uh, um, and we had someone mention cross training. And so while starting out, maybe it's not quite as important. I thought it was worth a mention. Definitely. Yeah. I, Jessica Grant. Mention that, right? Yeah, add strength training and foam rolling. Yeah. yeah, I didn't foam roll until I was marathon training, but I was literally just talking about this on my, my bi-weekly girls run about how it was much more motivating to get out there, and I felt like I was in better shape when I was doing different things things like I, I had a I good schedule where I was like I would do Zumba on Monday and then Tuesdays and Saturday I would do um like body pump and I do Zumba on Saturday and run like, like I was doing like all of these different things mm-hmm. and I felt just I felt better and I felt more motivated to go to the gym like I feel like all I've done for the last like eight months is run mm-hmm. and I'm sick of it yeah like, I'm like I was like I need something else to do which is why I think the 21 day fix I'm like oh it's something different <laughs> and I do think I was a stronger runner than um when I first started I did was doing a lot of what you were talking about the beach body stuff I did um p90x3 which is again like 25 minute workouts um I did t25 I did all this cross training stuff and like it just I wasn't running quite as much as I run now, so I had a lot, a little bit more time for it. Um, but mm-hmm. I do really think that it's affected the way that uh, I run. I have yeah. been trying to incorporate more stretching and um, foam rolling slash massage. So we got a massage gun, which hasn't been so my jealous. something good somehow, and I, maybe at some point it will be. But we got a massage gun, and we've been using that. I love that. Instead of foam rolling, the massage gun has become like my best friend. God, the foam rolling hurts so bad. The I massage after gun I'd run, hurts. Like those, those huge miles when I was <laughs> marathon training, I'd come home and just like grunt and groan, like rolling on the foam roller. So I today used the higher setting on the massage gun, and like I, I have a tendency to like let up when things start to hurt, but I like really let myself like let it. I don't know, really get into those muscles and it was get painful. Yeah, it was painful, but it was it was really good. It hurts so good. It hurts uh, so good. <laughs> I know this I'm uh terrible with stretching. I don't stretch at all. Up until like a couple months ago, he kept saying stretching doesn't do anything. It's science. <laughs> well, there is What? Well, there is not good science about whether stretching helps or not. That is just reality there just there is no data that says it's good or bad it's kind of neutral um i thought that was about like no, about like really static stretching before a run i thought like no just in general run. it doesn't really there's no definitive benefit or negative no we, it's not a negative either we, we've had just, arguments about yeah. this um all the coaches say to stretch including all the ones that you listen to on podcasts like david roach yeah. and megan yeah. but they roach, don't they say all that talk about evidence. it like the, there's a difference between but i feel good. better when i stretch like yeah. my muscles don't they're hurt two of the most like, scientific people you'll ever meet in your entire I'm life talking about injury prevention not other stuff there's no evidence that it prevents injury no, anyway. I don't do it to prevent injury. I do it so I don't feel like death the next yeah. day. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> as we've anyway. learned, we should not listen to anything Michael has to say. I Just do like sh- bad advice with Michael. Like, let's make that a segment. <laughs> yes, we but, should make that a segment. I stretch when necessary. Oh, gosh. Um, so, yes, strength training, foam rolling, massaging, massage gun, uh, stretching all yeah. in my opinion very important to uh the recovery part of the running yeah i think recovery is really important tom you're not very good at stretching i'm not i believe in it though yeah like <laughs> like but i'm magic but i'll be on the floor stretching <laughs> after magic. a run and he'll, he won't <laughs> or he'll stretch for like two seconds i was like you have to hold it for at least 30 seconds for it to do anything <laughs> Uh, Guilty as charged. Our, our relationships are strong, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I have no fear. <laughs> oh, gosh. I wait till it gets to the point where I have to stretch or I won't be able to move anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I just... Like his his hip has been really bad, so we've been stretching that. Yeah. 
Yeah, I feel like I stretch. Like, my rule of thumb is if it's anything more than, like, five miles, I always stretch. I'm not good. I'm not great at, at stretching if I only go out and do like two or three miles, even though I should. Yeah. 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 But if I'm going to be honest, I, I don't. Well, honestly, when I go, when we go real on our long runs, like something closer to 20, I don't really love stretching after them because I feel like you're so fatigued. Oh, that's the best time to stretch. I actually think that that's part of my issue mm-hmm. is that my long run routine used to be long run, come home stretch foam roll take an epsom salt bath and i have gotten out of that habit and i think that's why sometimes i um don't feel as great as i used to like the day after a long run yeah what i like to do is long run come home sit down on the couch drink a beer i know and and (laughs) so worst thing for you this has become (laughs) literally the worst thing you can do right and so this has sort of become like the routine and this is why i have gotten out of it because then he's sitting on the couch drinking a beer and i want to drink the beer too so (laughs) or have a coffee while you're stretching (laughs) or have a coffee then i'll throw up that's not that fun but that's that's a good tip for new runners so if you guys are just starting out like your body will tell you after your first half marathon or your first 10k that all you want to do is sit and be lazy for the rest of the day walk, do not yeah. do that yes like keep moving at least mm-hmm. a little bit <laughs> yeah yeah and you'll yeah. feel better the next day because yeah. everyone i know has made that mistake where they've done like their first half marathon and then come home and sat on the couch and then can barely walk the next day. <laughs> that is true. isn't it lactic acid build up in your legs or something yes. like that yeah. is that the science behind yep. it so keep okay. moving yep as much as it sucks keep moving even if it's slowly, yeah. just keep moving, you know? Yeah, it'll, it'll suck less over time. Yeah, yeah. it'll yeah. suck way less than that next morning will. <laughs> I, yeah. I would also add um, to do whatever exercises you can add to strengthen your core and lower back because there's a lot of repetition on those muscles. Um, and I used to throw my back out all the time. I have not done that in a very long time. And that's, I mean definitely because of running but like when you're when you're starting to run you're going to use muscles that you don't use that frequently Mm. you're You're going to use muscles you didn't know you had yeah yeah so just and there's any number of of different exercises that you could do but i would say definitely focus on strengthening your lower back and and your core I remember when I this is this is how dumb I am. Here's your his, your Diana's dumb history. I didn't know what your quads were. <laughs> <laughs> like I didn't know that's what they were called because I never did sports. I never like and I was I was always like man, like the front of my thighs hurt and everyone's like your quads. <laughs> Uh, like my front thigh like what is that <laughs> my front thigh my front thighs it's so dumb uh, but you'll notice like your butt hurts or i don't yeah. know like just every random piece of your body will hurt and it's fine true. it'll get better that's but true d- like guys you guys are making resting. yeah i was gonna say you're making running sound terrible right now we're trying to I mean, encourage it, these it, people to continue running <laughs> no don't do it it's stupid i don't it know is. why we do it honestly <laughs> well and I, and then like something uh, jumping off kind of what Angie's saying here, no pointless runs, even if all you have in you is a quarter mile, just do it and just be kind to yourself. Um, like sometimes you're going to go out and it's just going to suck and it's going to suck the whole time and you're going to come back and you're like, that sucked and that's okay. <laughs> like it doesn't have to feel like an accomplishment. It can just suck. Yeah. And then true. you're like, whatever, I'll just do it again next time and it'll probably be yeah. a little better. Like it doesn't have to be good anytime. Awesome. So did we get some, I know we got some kind of random feedback that didn't fit into a category. Yeah. Uh, just some pieces that I liked, like Angie, what he just said about Angie. And then uh, Amy from Run Eat Drink mentioned that as in life, comparing the uh, comparison is the thief of joy. So judging your progress and training against someone else's, don't do it. Yeah. And I 100% agree with that. And I know, Tom, you said that in the last episode, right? I'm a huge proponent that you are only competing against yourself. Um, And, you know, I mean, I feel like competition isn't a terrible thing. And it's good to have goals. And it's good to, you know, know, if you have a group of folks that you run with, uh, maybe make it 
competitive, whatever you want to do, whatever motivates you. But personally, um, I completely agree that if you start to rank yourself against other people and, and use that as a negative to talk yourself out of trying, that's, that's just detrimental. That, and you're never going to progress. Yeah, that's the whole thing with the, you know, like my, my, my fast pace is someone else's slow pace. So, you know, we, we joke around about karate and we look at his and he's like, oh, I was running so slow today and it's like an 830 and I'm like, oh, wow, I don't even go an 830 on like a fast day. Um, So like, and I know we do the same thing where we'll be like, oh my gosh, we're running so slow and we're doing like an 1130 to 12 and to somebody else that might be what their fast pace is. So that's something, just get that out of your head. Get that whole thing out of your mindset. It doesn't, whatever your pace is, is your pace and it doesn't matter what other people are doing. Yeah, and even with that, a lot of time, like if someone says they'll slow their pace to run with you, like, trust that i remember i was really scared to run aaron with you and Brittany Mm -hmm. at shamrock because i was like but i'm not at the pace you're at and you guys are like no no it's seriously fine we'll do whatever you want to do yeah and i had anxiety about it like i didn't want to do it and now i'm like why would i not run with with friends at a race to have fun like they don't care like Mm -hmm. most definitely Yeah, same thing yeah. with like just joining groups and uh, group yeah. runs and stuff. There's, you'll always find someone who's willing to to hang back with you and 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 do your pace. So don't ever be afraid to put yourself out there. Yeah, and I mean Tom and I, like we mentioned, we talk about it a lot, right? We do this this group through Charm City Run, and we're always the slowest, like always, and that's fine. And um, our coach says that's fine, and even like when we do workouts and stuff like that she's even done some different things to to help us out so instead of doing okay it's wednesday night we're going to do three miles she'll say we're going to do a 45 minute workout which is great for tom and i because it's however much we can get done in that time and we're all finishing at the same time yeah but it's no pressure to keep up with anybody yeah um or to go a certain pace like when we do speed work it's speed work at your own pace where she gives us a workout and things like that but like i don't care that but like we're getting when we are on the track we get lapped by people sometimes a couple of times and like if i was just thinking about that i would stop and go home but i'm like well i'm out here and that's better than someone sitting at home Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah Yeah, because i'm not out there for them i'm out there for me yeah Mm -hmm. yeah Yep. And yep. and they know that too. Like yep. they're, we're not they're not saying, "Hey, you want to race?" Like honestly, I feel like it's very intimidating because I I remember um you were doing Pike's Peak in Rockville, which is a it's a flat kind of well, it's like a downhill, it's a very fast 10k. And I like I drove you to the start line and then I just like stood there and I watched the elites get ready. And I'm like, look at these people. They all look like gazelles. <laughs> <clears throat> and I remember, because then I drove to the finish line, um, and I, I kept seeing them come across, and I'm like, this is, am- this is, this is very intimidating. It can be very intimidating, but you, you kind of got to get that out of your head completely. You're only competing with yourself, um, and, and you're, you're doing it for yourself, right? You're not doing it for anybody else but you. So, yeah, I think that's a keep that, great just piece keep of that advice. In mind. Yep. Uh, our new friend JG Runs also mentioned to enter a race that scares you into training. So Ooh, that worked yep. for him. He ran a he entered a half marathon. And I think that I kind of did that. You know, as as you mm-hmm. go along, you're like, well, what what next big goal can I? can I Mm -hmm. try for? And I think that half marathon or the marathon were the two that scared me the most. Yeah. uh, Same for me. The guy used, uh, I think I'd set a goal to run a half marathon within a year, like at the year mark, Mm -hmm. it was a year and a month, whatever it was, but then I ended up doing it sooner. Yeah. And then, jumped into the marathon yeah we we a know a couple months later and that was Again, scary we're, we're back to yeah. we're back to don't do anything michael does. you yeah. know what that worked for you no, it did, yeah it did. Yeah. No. yeah it scared like but it scared me into training for it yeah 
I was like, yeah, and a and a goal a goal race doesn't have to be a distance as well. It could be it like a be speed time. goal yeah. for a race, yeah, like yep. a sub thirty five k. Like yeah. if, even if you just want to do five k's for the rest of your life, maybe make get get like ten seconds faster each time you do a five k. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had a my friend Nikki. She was, she cracks me up because then she always signs up for like a longer distance race. But after every like half marathon, she's like, I'm only doing ten k's from now on. <laughs> she's like, that's it. She's like, that's my race. I like it. I'm just gonna do that. And then she does it. And then we'll set herself a new goal race. Like, but it takes her a while. It does take her like nine months to to do that. But um, if you just say, hey, I just want to do ten k's forever. That's fine. Well, I think yeah. is forever. I think it's so funny that um, we, if you listen to the past uh, inside the runner studio with running on tap, she was like, um, Jacqueline was talking about the marathon and laughing at Kyle, who was saying that it was like his favorite distance. And then literally the next episode that we listened to, she's like, I'm signing up for a marathon. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait a second. You guys are just on our podcast with her saying she never wants to do a marathon again. And I thought yeah. that was hilarious. That's what happened. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> but again, for her, that's another, that's a goal again that continues to scare her. So she continues to do it because it's what motivates her to keep running yeah is doing something that's hard and i've said that multiple times like if i'm not training for something i do not run yeah like it's so hard for me or it's really hard for me to like push my like i'll get up and i'll run but i like won't push myself yeah. or do any like i won't get out of my comfort zone at all or, or say that i'm gonna stay out longer or yeah. do anything like that so i have to be registered like i registered for dopey and it scared the crap out of me yeah like, <laughs> And I had to train for that. <laughs> I will say, though, that once if you're starting running, it's very exciting because each distance that you do complete mm-hmm. gives mm-hmm. you such motivation and such confidence yeah. for the next distance. Yeah. Like even signing up for your first 5K. Yeah. You know? It's scary. Like, yeah, it's scary. And then mm-hmm. just, but, but the progression, because once you do that, you're like, okay, so that didn't kill me. Um, maybe I'll do a 10 K, maybe I'll do a half, you know, whatever it is, whatever that trajectory is. Um, I think that's one of the best parts when you're starting out in the beginning is, is just finding out that it's not so big and scary Mm -hmm. and that you can do a lot more than your, your brain might be telling you you can. Yeah, Mm -hmm. absolutely. And I mean, coming from someone who never did anything remotely athletic in their life, never played a sport like would call out if I had to run the mile or call out, but like not go like not go to school. Cause I was fake sick, you know, <laughs> to get out of running a mile, like anything I had to do to, to not do anything athletic for, for me to sign up for my first half marathon was the, the most intimidating thing in the world. And I remember missing out on like a race with my friends because I was too scared to sign up for a half marathon. It was all I could think about was how dumb I was. Like, I was like, Oh, I could have done that. But it was, you know, I think it was a Disney race. It was like, I had to sign up nine months in advance. Oh, and it's yeah. hard to commit nine months in advance to know like, okay, I probably could have trained and done that by like where I am now. Yeah. That's true. So yeah, I love that advice. Yeah, I think our last thing came from Brez Kathy, where she mentioned that overdressing is easy to do. Yeah, that's something that we um, have talked about a couple times along the way. With uh, I guess that goes kind of with gear. Um, that uh, during these colder months, it's easy to to overdress. <laughs> Yeah, maybe we'll finally do um, our running in cold weather episode <laughs> that we've been teasing for six months. In the middle since of winter. Yeah, next time. Yeah. Since we started this podcast, we've been saying that we were going to do that. Running in cold weather. <laughs> running in cold weather. But, uh, um, yeah, yeah, that's great, so hopefully, guys. Hopefully that, that helped some new runners. And then for um, our, you know, our seasoned runners, hopefully you could at least laugh at our nonsense. <laughs> if, it wasn't, if it wasn't helpful. <laughs> yeah. All cool. right. That brings us to something good. Tell me something good. Guys, last yeah. time I revisited Middle Earth. This time I'm revisiting Hogwarts. Oi, Ron. Uh, as we all know from... <laughs> 
Michael's <laughs> terrible accents that he's been doing throughout this entire podcast. This was not going to be a surprise for any of you. But we are on the eighth movie right we now. We allowed to do the Crucial Curse. Cruciate it. Cruciate it. He can't even. He just. I just. I can't. Dobby is a free elf. Now we have both of them doing this. <laughs> this is. While I have enjoyed my revisit to the Wizarding oh. World of Harry Potter, this is what I've been. The nonsense that I've been putting up with for the last week. So we've done a movie a night <laughs> for the last week. Oi, it's me, Cedric Diggory. <laughs> <laughs> He what does he not say oi. <laughs> Why does he say oi? Like, First of all, Cedric Diggory does not sound like that. He doesn't even have an accent. I don't even yes, know. He does. He's I like climb on spider monkey. <laughs> anyway. anyway, so while my something good has been revisiting <laughs> Harry Potter and all of the movies that uh, are... <laughs> The Wizarding World of Harry <laughs> Potter. And it has been really fun, minus these accents. So if you haven't oh watched Harry Potter for some ungodly reason, you should go do so. And if you have, you should go revisit it. Just hopefully you don't have someone in your life that is going to do these awful accents for hours while you're watching them. That's the Agreed. end of mine. Agreed. They are such fun movies, though. <laughs> they are fun. They're good. Do you want to go? Oh, do you want me to go? Um, so I've got two something goods this this week. And the first is um, I bought a Captain America pillowcase that is just offending Tom's being. It's basically <laughs> just Chris Evans' face, oh and I just God. sleep on it. Amazing. Um, so that's a Thor one. Oh, it's in my Amazon cart. But like, <laughs> that's just, it's just bringing me so much joy. And Tom is just so annoyed with it. I'm sleeping on the couch. <laughs> just, just leave me alone with the pillow. It's fine. Um, so there's that, that that's my something good. And then my real something good is I finally watched Never Have I Ever on Netflix. Oh. It came out in April. Yeah. It's a Mindy Kaling. Mm -hmm. It's, um, I guess it's like a, not, I guess like a young adult. It's, it's, she's, a, it's she's about high a soft, yeah, high school sophomore. Um, it's hysterical. There's 10 episodes and they're a half hour long each. So I watched it all in literally one sitting. I did the mm. same back then, back when it came out. I love, that was a really good show. I agree. I loved it. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was great. It was funny. It was sad. Um, and for those of you guys who know me, I'm obsessed with Mindy Kaling. I love her. I, I can't believe it took me this long to, to watch it, but, um, I don't know. She acted like a real teenager. Mm -hmm. Like she made like really crappy decisions. And I was like, I would have made like you, you're kind of judging, but you're like, God, I would have done that. Like, <laughs> it's just, it's so real and good. And yeah, go watch. Never have I ever. Um, well, my something good comes out in three hours and 35 minutes. Uh, and that would be the wonderful game. Hitman three which I will play hundreds of hours of over the next t two months or so. I'll go watch Bridgerton without him. <laughs> I will uh, enjoy the final installment of this trilogy of Agent 47 and his story as a hitman. And uh, What if it's not good? It hasn't come out yet. Uh, it'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like how it says something good no. before. When I saw that on here, I was like, wait a second. This hasn't even come out yet. How is this here something good? If it's not good, I'll go back and play Skyrim again for the 3,000th time. <laughs> so is this for the PS5? Uh, yeah, I'm playing on PS5. Very cool. But it is available on, I believe it's on every platform. So to round us out, my something good for this week is actually a podcast that I kind of stumbled on. So we live... Um, close to Washington, D.C., and the rock station here is D.C. 101. One of their DJs um, has a podcast with a co-host. Um, it's called Jamily Matters, and it's basically um, it's dedicated to Pearl Jam, and Pearl Jam is one of my favorite bands, but what they do is they take a look at all of Pearl Jam's studio albums, and they rank each song from 
basically worst to best. And what they're actually trying to build towards is a um, a list of all the Pearl Jam songs from from best to worst. Um, it's very nostalgic. Um, I'm 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 a big Pearl Jam fan, but I'm not a super fan in that I don't know all of their music and some of the in between albums I'm not really familiar with. So it's actually given me a lot of opportunity to hear about these songs and go explore them myself. So I've, you know, I've been put onto some new music for me, but I've been eating this podcast up. Like, yeah, it sounds right up your alley. Binging it. And it's definitely right up my alley. It's all about music and nostalgia and kind of how they were reacting. And the, the guy Roach, um, we're, we're basically the same age. So we happened upon Pearl Jam, both in high school. So it's kind of like I can identify with him. And then the co-host, Billie Jean, she she didn't get into Pearl Jam until like later after the majorly popular records and after they're kind of, you know, they had settled down a little bit and, and they weren't as mainstream. Mm-hmm. So like, yeah. and then she went back and experienced some of the earlier albums. And so just kind of the juxtaposition of how they... Um, came to the band and became super fans and just how they break down the songs and the albums. It is definitely something that I have enjoyed. So if you're looking for a music podcast and you like Pearl Jam, Jamily matters on all streaming platforms. Sounds Guys, good. Yes. This is, this is the end. The end? Forever? Yeah. Of this episode. Okay, we'll be back. We will be back. <laughs> um... But to close us out, um, we are on all the social media. Please tag us in your runs. Share with us your adventures. If you set a goal and you knock it out, let us know about it so we can shout you out on Goal Getters. Um, We will have these episodes and our Inside the Runner Studios um, in between. Um, You could also always shoot us an email. We'll run for at gmail.com. And then lastly, um, please like, subscribe, share, tell your friends. We love to build this community and we are very appreciative of everybody. So for Aaron, Michael, and Diana, this is Tom and we will see you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.